children of St. Jude. Please honor that. Before Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan had Jack, before Kurt Russell and Golda Hahn had Wyatt, before Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet had Zoe, before Pink and Corey Hart had Willow, and yes, before Jay-Z and Beyonce had Blue Ivy, and long before Harry and Meghan had Archie, right here, right here in this city, our own royal couple, Elvis and Priscilla, had a beautiful bundle of joy named Lisa Marie. It was 1968. It was the best of times and the worst of times, very trying times in our city. Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. That was the worst of times. Many of you here remember that period truly one of the most trying times in the history of our nation. God knows it was hard. It was a hard year for Memphis. But 54 years ago, there was a star shining right here at Graceland with the birth of this precious angel. In fact, Lisa Marie's birth is woven into the institutional memory and historical social calendar of this city. Think about that for a moment. She was and remained the only child born to the world's most famous father. She was a conduit to the throne, the keeper of the flame, she was the image of a king. She was that special. Now, I don't know much about Hollywood. Can't speak for Hollywood. Can't speak for New York or any other city where Lisa may have spent time. But I can tell you that Lisa Marie was this city's precious jewel every day of her life. In fact, in the way we talk around you and we say down south, Lisa Marie was what many folks would call our own play sister or play cousin. If some of you who are not from around here find that a little strange. Let me just break it down for you. You have people who are played relatives. That's an individual who's just tied to you in an inseparable way. That you call them a part of your family. And the only reason you use that term play, sister or brother, is to let everyone know that the bond is not really blood. The bond is affection. It's love in the final analysis. It's not your decision to choose your siblings. That's what grown folks do. But your play sister is somebody you choose. And we chose Lisa's our play daughter, our play sister, not of blood, but of love and affection. She was that special to us. She was not only the king's daughter, she was our city's choice. And y'all have heard me say this before, Elvis may have been born in Tupelo, and Priscilla may have starred on Dallas, but Lisa Marie was all Memphis. She belonged to us, and we belonged to her. 
we kept her in our hearts when we saw her at such a young age deal with the weight of fame and deal with grief. The joy of peaks as we're on this hill, a peak, but just a few feet down is the valley. She was on the peaks of life, but she know, she knew that there was hurt in the valley, yet she dealt with it. Today, as I wrap this up, we celebrate her love, we admire her artistry, we embrace her family, and we recognize the strength and sheer force the sheer force of will it took for Lisa just to keep on climbing. When Elvis was a young man, he used to visit East Trig Baptist Church in South Memphis, where the pastor was a brilliant black man named Reverend Dr. William Herbert Brewster. The music in the place was amazing because in addition to being a tremendous pastor and preacher, Dr. Brewster was a gifted songwriter whose prolific pen helped to propel gospel singers' careers to soaring heights. He was always a, also a playwright and a poet. Let me leave you with his words. And then, when I come to the end of life's way and my sun goes down at the close of the day, all weary and worn, I shall cling to my shield. Though I won't be heralded a claim to be a hero in the field, in the cool of the evening, I shall come to my rest in the sweet conclusion. I've done my best. So as her body finds rest at Graceland, and as her soul by grace takes flight, her spirit will live in the collective memory of a city that loved her tenderly, loved her sweetly, and loved her truly. May God bless you. Twilight fades The blessed in Avalon The sky's cruel touch An aching autobahn Into the uncertain divine We scream into the last divide you
and take you home into the night. You make me real. You make me real. Strong as I feel. You make me real Okay, so A.C. Wharton, that was incredible, it really was. We, you, talked about, you talked about the flames, and I think it's time that we all need to stoke our flames within to do what Joel said, which was to celebrate this extraordinary uh, Lisa Marie. And I stand here with great honor uh, because we called each other sissy, and um, I've been with you, been with you all for all, all, all your lives, really. And uh, I stand here with great honor. But uh, so, Sissy, this is for you with affection. My late uh, mother-in-law used to say that nothing can be said, can begin to take away the anguish and the pain of these moments. Because grief is the price we pay for love and how right she was. And today we talk about Lisa Marie. Uh, we look at Priscilla as a mother, as a mother to Lisa Marie. We look to Lisa Marie and say, you lost a son. Mothers losing children, it, there are no words for it. So today we talk about action, and action is the way we can go forward. We can light the flame. So for Riley, for Harper and Finley, and for the entire family, we march forward in support of you. All of us are with you, and we will help you as best you can. If you just put out your hand, we will be there. Or, well, I will definitely be there. Um, so David Frost died, and George Frost was his son, and I asked George if I could read it today, and it's for you. I've had my life and enjoyed every second, but as it is, another life has beckoned. It's important to know that I've not gone, and I hope that on you all my light has shone. Stay in that sunshine. Rest never in the shade. Don't curse my absence, as this light you'll evade. I live in the smiles, the moon, the stars and sky, and I feel eternal pride as I watch you all fly. And for my darling children who wonder what to do, just have a wonderful time, as I will, living through you. Thank you.
Let her lie down Let her slide down Hello, everyone. First of all, I want to thank the family, the Presley family, Priscilla, Riley, Harper and Finley. I want to thank Jack Selden and everybody at Elvis Presley Enterprises. I want to thank Joel Weinschenker, and ABG, everybody making this possible. <sighs> Me and a girl named Memphis. I always call Lisa Memphis. She had that attitude. And she always called me Jerry Schilling, always in that cadence. Her son, Ben Storm, did the same thing. Jerry Schilling? In 1967, Elvis invited me back here to Graceland for Christmas and New Year's. As I was leaving to go back to LA and back to work, he looked at me and he said, you're not gonna stay for the birth of our daughter? I said, I guess I will. So I was here until February 1st. <laughs> Still got my job. Um, we got back, so I remember we got back to the, um, to the house here. And uh, I had never held a baby before. And we're in the kitchen. And Elvis just hands me Lisa. And I sure as hell wasn't going to drop her, you know. <laughs> and um, that was the beginning of my journey with Memphis. Neron, it's wonderful that you're here too, my friend. Uh, we spent a lot of time together in her childhood days. And as she grew up, one thing uh, giving day uh, at her mom's, she said, I need to have a meeting with you. I don't know, she was 18 or 19, Priscilla, you know. And uh, so I said, okay. So we went to an exclusive place, the Hamburger Hamlet. <laughs> and she said, I need a job. And, I, and she said, I know people don't think I'm responsible, but I really am. And God bless her, she really was. She became my secretary. And any time I said that, she would always correct me. I'm your assistant. <laughs> we started working out of my home. I had a couple of other people, Emily Corota, that was on my staff. and. Um, then we eventually moved to offices on Sunset Strip, where she had many responsibilities, one of which was to answer all the phone calls that would come in to me. And I don't know, about every couple of weeks, she would come in, very disgruntled look on her face. Somebody else wants to talk to you about Lisa Marie. They had no idea they were talking to her on the phone. <laughs> So, uh, we had fun with that. Um, at the time, uh, 
I was managing uh, another Memphian, if you will, Jerry Lee Lewis. And, uh, and Memphis was the only person I knew who could intimidate Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> so Danny, you may remember this. After a Jerry Lee Lewis concert one night, we went to dinner at Le Dome, and she said, Jerry Lee, what's this I heard about you ran into the gates of Graceland? It was the first time I ever saw Jerry Lee Lewis speechless and nervous. But she could do it, she just had that way. As Lisa's first manager, I always, from the garage music you guys did, Danny, I always believed in her as both a singer and a songwriter. One of the very first songs she co-wrote with Danny was called Give Me the Strength, which has a special meaning always to me, and especially today, because I think at that young age, it was almost the gospel feel that she, she knew she would need strength to go through life. I was also honored and proud when asked to perform Lisa's wedding, Riley Ben's wedding, more recent, Navarone's wedding. So I have a nickname within the family. They call me Rev J. <laughs> I would like to end with Recently, on a Sunday afternoon, after she had left Memphis on her father's 88th birthday, she asked me if I would walk her on the red carpet to the Golden Globes the following Tuesday. Afterwards, as we walked to the car, the last thing she said to me, Jerry Schilling, I love you. As I was in the hospital with her father, when Priscilla was giving birth, I was at the hospital with her mother when she left us. Memphis, I will always love you. Thank you. Jerry, that was beautiful, really. Um, I'm going to read something that my granddaughter wrote for all of you. And this says it all. The old soul. I have no idea how to put my mother into words. Truth is there are too many. Lisa Marie Presley was an icon, a role model, a superhero to many people all over the world. But Mama was my icon, my role model, my superhero, in much more ways than one. 
Even now, I can't get across everything there is to be understood or known about her. But as she always said, I'll do my best. The old soul, this is a poem, the old soul. In 1968, she entered our world, born tired, fragile, yet strong. She was delicate, but was filled with life. She always knew she wouldn't be here too long. Childhood passes by with a glimpse of her green eye. She then grew a family of her own. Then came her second child, leaving her with suspicion. Could this be the angel that takes me home? Time, of course, flew by. It was time for a tragedy. She knew it was close to the end. Survivors, guilt, some would say, but a broken heart was the doing of her death. Now she is home where she always belonged, but my heart is missing her love. She knew that I loved her. I fear I'll never touch her, but the old soul is always with me. She doesn't drift above. That says it all. And thank you all for being here. Never um, your brother. Thank you for being here. And the family, of course, and all of you. Our heart is broken, Lisa. We all love you. Thank you. I'm going to read something Riley wrote. A letter to my mama. Thank you for being my mother in this life. I am eternally grateful to have spent 33 years with you. I'm certain I chose the best mother for me in this world, and I knew that as far back as I can remember you. I remember everything. I remember you giving me baths as a baby. I remember you driving me in my car seat, listening to Aretha Franklin. I remember the way you would cuddle me and when I'd come into your bed at night and the way you smelled. I remember you taking me for ice cream after school in Florida. I remember you singing me and my brother lullabies at night and how you'd lay with us until we fell asleep. I remember how every time you'd leave town, you'd bring me a new tea set from Cracker Barrel. I remember all the notes you'd leave in my lunchbox every day. I remember the feeling I'd get when I'd see you picking me up from school, the way your hand felt on my forehead. I remember how it felt to be loved by the most loving mother I've ever known. I remember how safe it felt to be in your arms. I remember that feeling as a child, and I remember it two weeks ago on your couch. Thank you for showing me that love is the only thing that matters in this life. I hope I can love my daughter the way you loved me. The way you loved my brother and my sisters. Thank you for giving me strength, my heart, my empathy, my courage, my sense of humor, my manners, my temper, my wildness, my tenacity. I'm a product of your heart. My sisters are a product of your heart. My brother is a product of your heart. We are you, you are us, my eternal love. I hope you finally know how loved you were here. Thank you for trying so hard for us. If I didn't tell you every day, thank you.
With Lisa's passing, I knew if I was invited, I needed to come to these ceremonies. I hadn't planned on speaking, and when I was put on the spot, I really didn't know what to say, and I was, I was tongue-tied and nervous, and I don't even really know what I said. But I, as I'm sure many of you are, are still in shock, as I feel I'll continue to be for quite some time. I feel like I'm supposed to be texting her like right now, saying I'm here, telling her how, how wonderful everyone is. I never in a million years imagined singing here, and especially under these circumstances. This is truly devastating, and I'm sure excruciating for everyone here and all of those affected by her passing. At the same time, one can see how hard everyone's worked and is working to make this as beautiful for Lisa as it can be and is. I'm honored to be here for Lisa and her family. I, didn't, I don't know that I deserve to be here, especially speaking amongst those that have known Lisa for longer and were much closer than her and I, especially her family and those that have known her most of their lives or even all of hers. I do know Lisa loved her family very much and was fiercely protective of her father, his legacy, and both her love for him and his love for her. She was extremely proud, as proud as anyone could ever be of her father and his many accomplishments, his place in music, America, and American and world history. She was also very proud of the Elvis movie and how she felt it portrayed her father and the care that was put into the film by those involved. Mr. Lerman's vision and direction and Austin Butler's dedication to the role of her father. With Ben's passing, Lisa's life and the rest of her family and his loved ones took a turn down a hard road that she was honoring for the honoring to the best of her abilities, seeking out help and choosing to help others who experienced or were experiencing such a such a loss and pain. We are gathered here today to pay our respects to Lisa and her family and to share our memories, console one another to the degree that we're able. And though under such difficult, heartbreaking and somber circumstances also to celebrate the life of a friend, a loved one, a beautiful and good soul and a cherished and deeply missed family member. Lisa is loved and missed by many and will continue to be loved and missed by all those whose lives she touched. Thank you.
God of comfort, console the hearts that are broken and those who struggle with the deep pain of grief because of the sudden loss of Lisa Marie. God of peace, be close to those who were close to her and give them peace and strength in the loss of their dear, precious, loving mother, their beautiful daughter and loyal friend. God of hope, even though today we sit in the shadow of loss, do not let us lose the hope that the light will shine tomorrow. God of joy, wipe away the tears and let the cherished memories of Lisa Marie bring joy to our hearts and keep us in the celebration of her life. God of love, fill our hearts as we commit Lisa Marie Presley to her final resting place next to her son and near to her father. And so we say goodbye, goodbye until tomorrow. And when I think that God is some not sparing, sent him to die, oh, I scarce can take it that on.
spring of 1968, I was a young teenager growing up here in Memphis, and my dad was James Blackwood of the Blackwood Brothers Quartet. And um, I'll never forget one night I was at home, the phone rang, and my ears perked up when he said, my dad said, well, hi, Elvis. And that was not unusual. Elvis would sometimes call and he'd say, Mr. Blackwood, can you get the quartet together and come out and I'm dying to sing some old gospel songs. And so they'd stay up till all hours of the morning singing. But this, this phone call was a little different. My dad hung up and he said, Elvis wants to introduce me to his baby girl. Do you want to go with me? And I said, of course. So we came out here and parked and went in. We're ushered into the foyer and a little bit Elvis came down the steps holding Lisa in his arms. He said, uh, Mr. Blackwood, this is, uh, this is my, my little girl, Lisa Marie. He said, Lisa, this is Mr. Blackwood, one of my heroes. I stood there just in awe and transfixed, you know, not saying anything, kind of taking in the moment. Several years before that, my dad had gotten a call and Gladys had passed away and Elvis and Vernon had requested that the Blackwood brothers sing at her funeral, which they were honored to do. And then my dad sang at Elvis's funeral as well. So this is kind of full circle. We are so honored to be here and to be a part of Lisa's celebration today. There's a song that uh, Elvis often had sung in his concerts, and he, he actually didn't sing it. He would listen as the Imperials and then later the Stamps would sing this song, and he would ask the audience just to be quiet and listen. And as this song was sung, a holy hush would fill the auditoriums. Our prayer is that that same holy hush would fill this place today. And Priscilla, Riley... Finley and Harper, our hearts are with you. We're all here today because we love your family. You're in our thoughts and prayers. May this song be the ushering in of God's peace and presence in your life, we pray.
thank you to all those who honored Lisa Marie today by speaking and performing. It would have meant so much to her. Thank you for all who came from all over the world to come here to celebrate her life. The meaning of existence is to reconcile liberty with service, the passing with the lasting, to weave the threads of the temporary into the fabric of eternity. Graceland allows for just that, and Lisa's voice will only be amplified with time and never be silenced or diminished. She was and will always be her father's protector, and we will continue to be hers. As we arrange for people to visit with Lisa, uh, I ask everyone, both in the media and all of the people who come here today, to respect the family's wishes to not be photographed or videoed. Uh, this is something that you can show your respect to Lisa by not doing. Uh, we will arrange in groups, obviously starting with the family and the friends. Uh, please wait for your group uh, to be shepherded to there. Thank you very much. Come on. 